So I got a question from Shreya Mishra. He says, what should I do for LRDI? Because I'm familiar with all the sets, but when I solve, when I solve them, I get stuck. <laughs> because of different logic, same thing happens in cons also. My highest percentile in mock till now is 80 to 85. So a breakthrough of 99 with intensive practice is possible with a question mark. I have got full syllabus of quant. What should be my, my practice strategy? Okay. So in this uh, question, there are two parts. One is LRD, the other is uh, quant. And the thing is that you have covered everything in terms of uh, syllabus. So I'm assuming that you have gone through all the live classes, application classes, and also dashboard questions. What you haven't done probably is you haven't gone through the PYQ. So what happens? You might be doing different kinds of sets in LRDI, but that is not comprehensive. It's endless, it's limitless. So to get most of it, we should be doing it from whatever source it comes from. So the best source I would say is PYQs. And that too, over the last seven years, from 2017 to 2023, and all these slots. So there'll be two to three slots. In all, we'll be having like 20, 21 um, slots, which makes four questions each, four sets each. So overall, you'll be having 80 to 90 sets to practice. If you start practicing five sets every day, this will take a lot of time, all right? So you can start it. Uh, probably if not all the years, all seven years, probably um, last four years can be done. So <clears throat> that is how you will uh, get an idea about there can be more different types than what you had assumed earlier. Not just that. Try to solve, like there are four, uh, I would say three slots are there. Uh, for example, let's take 2023, three slots are there. One slot you can practice by looking at the questions. Other two slots try to practice in a timed environment. In iQuanta website, there is an option where you can take the entire PYQ as a mock. So do that. For LRDI, automatically things will uh, improve. For quants, um, I think it's a, it's the same thing. Uh, the strategy, apart from doing the regular um, crash course that is happening, uh, start doing the PYQs in addition to the three mocks that you are doing every day, every 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 week. Probably you're doing it every week. And uh, whatever uh, marks you get, just try to analyze them and do not forget to uh, revisit when you're free, uh, revisit the mocks that you had attended earlier. So what happens after every mock, your knowledge base increases, your capability to solve a mock increases. So whatever you did three weeks ago or two weeks ago, just try to revisit the wrong questions which you did. So this is how you can uh, definitely improve. So this question is from Diksha Rana, our uh, student. And she asks how to do analysis after giving a mock. Like in Quant, there are same some topics which I haven't covered yet. So other questions on say I, so should I first study the basics of that topic or should I understand the question directly? Okay. See, there are two parts of this question. One is how to do the analysis, and other is there are some topics which you haven't covered yet. Now the query should be rephrased. So I'm uh, I'll, I'll just give you all the possibilities. See, the thing is. If you are not good in certain topics or not covered certain topics which are not relevant, then you can skip them. For example, uh, numbers, permutations, combinations, probability, even a bit of geometry as well. So basically, if you haven't covered these topics, then there is no harm. If you haven't covered something which is in algebra or arithmetic, then there will be some harm. So if you haven't covered these two, algebra, arithmetic, just go through all the basic concepts and try to revisit all the classes that are, have been taken, be it live or application. Also try to solve the <clears throat> topic-wise uh, tests and quant sectionals as well. So that is what you can do. Uh, this this answer the first query in which you have said that you haven't covered um, some topics yet. Now coming to how to do the analysis after giving a mock. So, <clears throat> so um, analysis is something which uh, should take more time than attempting the mock. So mock is of two hours. If I assume it, let, let's say you are doing some sectional mocks that is 40 minutes only for quant specifically. After that, you'll be taking close to one and a half hours uh, for just for the analysis. Why? Why do I say that? Because analysis doesn't only, you know, count that what ha you haven't solved and you look at the question and try to attempt it again. It also uh, counts whether if you've done something, is there a better way to do it? It, and when I say better, I mean, is there a quicker way to do it? Or is there some kind of insightful thing which probably you don't know? So going through all those 22 questions one by one in quant specifically will take you five minutes each, which makes up 110 minutes. So <clears throat> that is what uh, you can do uh, for analysis. Also, in iQuanta, as you might be aware of, there is an um, 
uh, AI based mock analysis which we, which will directly be telling you what are the strong points weak points and moderate points and apart from that you also have some kind of uh, uh, you know <clears throat> understanding of your own mind that what is your strong point or weak point and having said that if something is not relevant to the cat not I mean has, has got less weightage in the real cat and if that is your weak point do not worry about it if something has got a high weightage and it is uh, a weak point then you should be covering those topics again just by revisiting the, taking the concepts and the classes and some practice questions so here i have a question from vaishnavi Keshavani, and she says i'm really very bad in quants what has to be done so that you get the sectional uh, cut off clear with 100 percent accuracy see <clears throat> Having a 100% accuracy, I won't talk about that majorly, I'll talk about how to clear the sectional percentiles so across all the B schools, uh, the highest uh, sectional cutoff across all the IMs is 85 percentile in all the sections. So overall, let's say you get a call from IM Ahmedabad, BC, any any black eyes. Uh, so your percentile overall should be at least, you know, more than 98 percentile. But at the very same time, you need to clear all the sectional cutoffs, which is 85 percentile at max. I am in the bath is 75. <clears throat> so how do that? To get the 85 percentile, first of all, you need to analyze this, uh, the statistical data of the previous four to five years. That at what score did you get this kind of percentile? All right. And uh, so whatever is given in the you know when you attempt a mock and you get some kind of percentile that is not the real uh, percentile. I would say because the thing is, you attempt a mock of any institute and there are some students which is just you know uh, <clears throat> I would say a miniature size of the entire cat aspirants so what do we get here in the mocks is something which will be in a way statistically uh, lower than what you'll get in the real cat because there will be a lot of people over there that is point number one so even if you're uh, clearing 80th percentile let's say in the mocks that means you'll be able to clear 85th in the real cat that is going to happen point number one Point number two, when you actually look at the previous trends that at what you got 85th percentile, which is your sectional cutoff. So it normally happens in seven to eight questions in quants, not more than that. So having seven to, doing seven to eight questions correctly, uh, first of all, requires that you need to analyze and identify your strong points. And those strong points can be, and those strong points should be in arithmetic and algebra. That should be there. <clears throat> also in arithmetic, very, anything which is connected to percentages that is profit loss discount simple uh, problems on percentages SICI and things connected to ratios ratios if you are through this then uh, ideally four questions will be coming from only these you know which will be the I would say a, a small chunk of the entire arithmetic and for algebra from equations itself you'll get two questions at least so if you sort these things out so try to answer uh, try to attempt the questions that which of the topics that i have told you right now which will fetch you 80th percentile at least in any kind of mock start doing that start doing that and do it for three to four mocks after that if you still face some problem send me a query i'll answer i have a query from shriya agarwal and she says major issue i'm facing while giving mocks is in the quant section uh, section mein aate aate dimag kaam karna band kar deta hai. I'm not so good in quants, have not covered all the topics, but kuch question jo capable hu karne mein, us mein bhi time zada lagne par leave kar deti hu. Aisa lagta hai to submit kar dun paper. So, okay, I get it. The thing is, which a lot of people feel because uh, in CAT, what the first section is VRC, which will, you know, which will just be blasting all the literary canons. And then comes uh, LRDI, which is actually, you know, I would say it's 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 mind numbing and it tires you completely. So I, I, I know that feeling, of course. Then comes quant. And the problem is, if someone is not from the mathematics background, he or she will feel, you know, devastated when they go to the <laughs> third section, which is what you feel, I, I, you know, I think, I think that's what you feel. So <clears throat> here the thing is that there are two, two things. First, is that is the problem with quants in terms of uh, topics or is the problem is in, is, is in like sitting through those two hours, uh, especially one hour 20 minutes after that quant starts. Okay, so there are two things which you are facing problem with. The first thing uh, which I think is more important is that you have some problem with quants topics. You need to and you also said there are some topics that you understand others you haven't touched yet uh, and those you understand you take a lot of time to you know kind of solve it. So there are three levels of problems here. Point number one if you haven't touched some topics and if those topics are from the cluster arithmetic or algebra then you should revisit those topics 
Okay, there's no point leaving that. Okay, and you revisit them in terms of your live process, application classes, and the uh, topic-wise uh, questions. Other. Some points, some topics in which you are strong, but you take a lot of time. That is because probably you have lack of practice in the in that topic. The topic which you feel is your strongest point, strongest point. Even in that, there's lack of practice. So I would suggest uh, <clears throat> that if you feel that some you are strong in certain certain topics, start doing twenty questions of those topics. Not every day, but whenever you you you, you get time. And if you haven't touched the topics which are from arithmetic or algebra. Start doing 50 questions from those topics. Do it this for the next 7 to 10 days. So first problem will be solved. First and second. Okay, coming third problem, <clears throat> wherein um, you have to sit through those two hours. For that you need to, it, it's more about you know kind of psychological and mental frame of mind, which will happen uh, if you complete everything, the first two steps, automatically confidence will improve. That is point number one. And other is to ha be habitual of that. So you need to, you know, kind of detoxify yourself from the, uh, uh, it's, it'll be a mental detox. So you have to, for some time, detach yourself completely from social media. You do not, you know, just, just detach yourself and also try to do some breathing exercises, some kind of pranayama yoga in the morning for 15 minutes and that will uh, keep you composed, calm and even, you know, you will be like uh, habitual of sitting. You will have a lot of patience. So try doing that. It will help. From where to practice 50 high quality questions daily? Okay. So 50 or whatever number of questions that you want to practice, obviously, yaar, high quality, karenge, low quality, Q karenge. Ab isme, if you are a student at iQuanta, go to your dashboard and you will find plenty of practice material. There are dedicated modules for every area. There are modules for people who are not very comfortable with some areas. And apart from that, you'd find a lot of practice questions that are segregated by topics. You'd find a lot of section tests, a lot of full length mocks, etc. Uh, on the other hand, in case you're not a part of iQuanta, uh, you can always go to our website and check the free CAT study material page where you'd find PYQs, which are also segregated using uh, the topics. So you can look at that. Apart from it, uh, even in our group on Facebook, and on our channel uh, on YouTube, we keep posting a lot of interesting questions which are relevant for the CAT exam. You can definitely benefit from those. And for strategy that you've asked, I need proper strategy. Uh, I think do connect with any of the experts at iQuanta and they can guide you in the best possible way. Uh, my score in VRC is stuck. I'm getting just 90 percentile. How to now go ahead and attempt more? Okay, so this basically means that there are some questions that you consistently get right and then there are some questions or some genres that consistently now trip you. So identify which question type is a, a type that you normally end up getting wrong or you normally end up skipping while attempting the exam. Uh, so focus on mastering that particular question type that should definitely help you. Apart from it, another problem could be that you are not able to increase your attempts beyond a certain level. So how do you now go ahead and increase your attempts? Uh, you need to learn to become faster. So focus on increasing your reading speed. That will help up, help you free up some time. Uh, additionally, practice can make you faster in certain question types, especially in verbal ability. So prioritize practicing those questions more in order to minimize the time that you take. Uh, and if you follow this path, I'm sure you'd definitely be able to attempt one or two questions right in the very next mock that you sit for. And from there, let's take it forward and increase it even further. My accuracy rate in VARC is consistently declining. Man, this is one of the questions that I have received a lot. So here are two things that you need to do. Number one, your accuracy is obviously correlated with the difficulty level of the questions. So if you are attempting a higher difficulty level questions, your accuracy rate may go low, in which case do not worry, continue to work on building your skills and your competence and that will take care of the issue. Huh, but if the level of difficulty has not increased and yet you are slipping up, then chances are that you are facing what I call the trap of guesses. Uh, so chances are that you guess a bit while choosing the right answer choice. So start building a stronger argument, a stronger reason 
for picking up a particular option and that will ensure that you would stop that decline and in fact register a growth. So look at where you fall in these two categories, take the actions accordingly and I'm sure things will take care of themselves. Okay, so you have your semester exams or your mid-sems happening and along with that cat is approaching and you want to give more time to it, you can't, what to do? There's a very common theme at this particular juncture and the, I think the answer is pretty straightforward and that is prioritize. Okay, so what do I mean by that? When, when the tasks that you want to perform are more than the time available to you, you need to consciously, willingly let go of some of those tasks. And at this juncture, when your semester exams are on, I have no doubt in my mind that your semester exams should be prioritized over your CAT preparation. And do keep in mind that, you know, a week or 10 days here and there will not really affect your CAT scores a lot. Okay, as Mahinder Singh Dhoni used to say, what you do a day before the a big match does not really count. What you've done in the months prior to it is what sails you through. So you are somebody who has prioritized the cat over the last few months. You have developed your skills accordingly. So even if you take this seven day break from the cat, and I'm not even saying break, the time that you have available after your semester exam preparation can still be devoted to it. Ah, so this seven day is not really going to lead to any adverse scenario. But if you do not prioritize your semester exams right now, that can probably affect your chances more. So choose wisely, focus on, this, on the semester exams and don't worry if you have put in the hours in the month leading up to this day, you do, in fact, you do better in the CAT too. Jaise jaise exam pass aate ja rahe, mock score pe fluctuation aa rahi hai, VRC achcha nahi ho raha, isko stabilize kaise karu? Okay, so, dekho, fluctuations are a normal part of the process. So, the way I see it is that when you attempt a mock, you have a floor and a ceiling, right? So, it could be that in your mocks, you score 60 on a bad day and 80 on a good day. So, first up, ignore the ceiling. 80 is meaningless. What you need to focus on is that 60, you know, on a bad day, this is what you get. Now, I want you to prepare in such a way that on a bad day, your score is 75, 76, 80. So, how do you do that? Take it step by step, okay? So, so for the next seven days, can you work on some area that you do not know so far? An area where your accuracy rate is less than 70%? Ah, so, work on that area for the next seven days so that when you write the next mock after that gap of seven days, you'd be able to answer those extra one or two questions right. And that will ensure that your floor of the score goes higher. And if you're already say at around 60, all that you need to do is get four extra questions right. And your ceiling takes you or in the floor takes you to the top 99 uh, to, to the top 1%. You'll have 99 percentile plus. So go ahead work in this particular approach and particularly for VARC, do not ignore the basics. A lot of it is skill. There are times when we stop practicing and when it comes to skills, you know, if you rest, you rust. So make sure that you start practicing questions every day and take feedback from every mistake. Utilize that feedback in order to become better for the next mock. And I'm very sure that, you know, four or five extra questions are doable over the course of next four or five weeks. You can do that for sure. The VARC ka mock analyze karne mein dikkat aa rahi hai. Kaise efficiently analyze kare? Yaar dekho, VARC mein thankfully, hamare paas doi to areas hai. Ek RC, ek VA. So RC mein, ab there are some questions that you could not attempt. Right? So sit down and think, why could you not attempt those? Is it that you did not know how to attempt those or is it that you ran out of time? So if you ran out of time, to speed pe kaam karna padega. Uske liye wo reading speed or questions ki understanding, elimination strategies, unhe jitna zyada polish karenge, uh, jitna zyada practice karenge, utna achcha ho jayega. Uh, and if you could not answer them, although you had time, to fir to bahut hi clear hai na, yaar, wo relevant knowledge, relevant skills develop karne. Fir isi tarah se kuch questions aapke galat bhi huye honge, unhe evaluate karein ki kya kami reh gayi aur kya add karna hai. Uh, moving over to verbal ability, we get mostly four paragraph based question types, identify which question type troubles you the most and then practice that as a, an isolated chapter, go through some 50, 60, 70 questions of that particular area and I am sure when you start attempting those questions later, you would get them right. So don't forget the goal of analysis is to create a strategy to become better and what I have advised you will definitely help you move in that direction.